Some events can't occur at the same time, such as, oh, I roll this dice and it comes up as a 1 and a 6 at the same time. No, that's not happening. However, it is possible that it comes up as a number divisible by 2 and divisible by 3 at the same time. So, mutually exclusive events are events that have different attributes which cannot occur simultaneously. You can't have it come up 1 and 6 at the same time. But, you can have it come up with 6, which is divisible by 2 and 3 at the same time. So those would be non-mutually exclusive events. Other examples, well, cards are pretty standard because dice, there aren't that many examples you can do of non-mutually exclusive events for them. For cards, well, from a standard 52 card deck, you can pull, say, spades, you can pull clubs, you can pull hearts, and you can pull diamonds. Any of these suits is mutually exclusive with all of the others because they do not overlap in the outcomes that these events describe. So you can have mutually exclusive events that have different probabilities, such as, say, faces of spades, which are three cards, the jack, queen, and king of spades, and clubs, which are 13 cards. Here we can label this A and we can label this B. Uh, conventions may vary slightly on whether you label the parts of a Venn diagram inside them or just above, but we won't get into that for now. The additive principle for mutually exclusive events says that the number of outcomes in A or B, so either one of these, Hey, that means we just add the number of outcomes in A and the number of outcomes in B, because there is no overlap. The total amount of the sample space that either one of these occupies can be just added to get what happens when we just want either one. Now, if we want the probabilities, we just add the probabilities of A and the probability of B to get A or B. So let's say we have 4 peanut, 3 pecan, 2 walnut, and 10 nut-free berry granola bars mixed randomly in a box. What is the probability of blindly grabbing a peanut or walnut bar? Well, we have probability of peanut or walnut equals probability of peanut plus probability of walnut. Because there aren't any bars that are peanut and walnut. If there were, well, this would be rather more complicated because we'd have to make sure we don't double count those. So we'd be dealing with 4 out of 19 plus 2 out of 19, which is equal to 6 out of 19. This is the probability of blindly grabbing a peanut or a walnut bar from this box. Now, what would happen if the walnut bars contained peanuts as well? Well, first of all, if it said four peanut bars, then it would be probability of just peanuts plus probability of walnut and peanut. In which case, it's the exact same. But if it was four bars with peanuts, three with pecans, two with walnuts, well, then you might have to uh, find a statement somewhere as to how many total bars there are, because they can overlap. 
and that would make them non-mutually exclusive events, which are different events that can happen at the same time. Now, uh, because there is a card, that's the Ace of Clubs, pulling aces from a deck and pulling clubs are not mutually exclusive events. There are four aces, there are 13 clubs, and there's one card that satisfies both. So we end up with event A, event B, and A and B. There's an overlap. Hey guys, what happens if we decide to shade this horizontally and shade B vertically? Oh hey, the overlap, we see that it gets counted twice. Is that reasonable? Let's say we're trying to cover the surface of a desk with books. Okay guys, so all these textbooks added together, we covered half of the desk. And now we start making the textbooks all overlap. So we stack them together. Are we still covering half of the desk? Obviously not. So we can't just add these two areas or just add the two numbers of outcomes for the two events, we have to also remove the part that we're counting twice when we just add them. Because in NA, there's also A and B. And in NB, there's A and B. So we counted this twice, and to get rid of it, we need to subtract it once. This would make the entire area counted once instead of this happening, i.e. double counting. You can try this with a deck of cards if you like, or a group of people, such as in this example we have 100 people, we have 63 people wearing gray, 52 people wearing green, and 27 people wearing both. What is the probability that you choose a person at random in this group and they wear neither green nor gray? Not green nor gray is equal to 1 minus probability of green or gray. And, well, probability of green or gray is gray is equal to probability of green plus probability of gray minus probability of green and gray. And that means in this 100 people we have, oh, 52 people in green, 52 over 100 plus the gray, 63 over 100 Minus green and gray is 27 out of 100. So this is going to leave us with, well, 52 minus 27. Hmm. That gives us a nice neat number of 25. And this is, ends up with 88 out of 100. So the probability of neither Not green nor gray is equal to 1 minus 88 over 100, which is 12 over 100 or 3 over 25. You can also write this as 0 0.12. Okay, so we could write 
our probabilities as decimals. Or we could write them as fractions, but fractions tends to be uh, better because there is less rounding involved. Right? Uh, are they better? Well, if you tell some guy, oh, the probability of there being rain tomorrow is 100 over 327. Is this a useful number for most people? Well, no. So usually you end up with decimals and percents for numbers in common use when you're trying to express them to others so that they can get a gauge of roughly what it is instead of fractions which are used for exact calculations. In summary, mutually exclusive events can't happen at the same time, such as a coin landing both heads and tails at the same time. Non-mutually exclusive events can occur at the same time. For example, pulling from a deck of standard 52 cards and you pull a number card, so 2 through 10, versus pulling a spade, or a club, or a heart, or a diamond. So those could occur at the same time, and to calculate the probability of mutually exclusive events A or B occurring, you use the additive principle, which is that the probability of either A or B is just equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. The number of outcomes for A or B would be the number of outcomes for A plus the number of outcomes for B, because there is no overlap. You can think of this as, oh, I have two textbooks on my desk. The area that the textbooks cover up when they don't overlap, so there is no space on the tech desk that's occupied by both textbooks, the amount of area they cover up is equal to the areas of both textbooks added together. And if you have non-mutually exclusive events A or B, you can think of those textbooks as being partially overlapped. In which case, well, they won't cover up as much of the desk as they would if they didn't overlap. So how can we make it so that this part doesn't equal to just this? Well, we have to subtract the part that overlaps. We can't count it twice. For the number of outcomes, we use the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So all the stuff that's included, but then we exclude the stuff that's been double counted or triple counted, depending on circumstances. Now, for the probabilities, well, we call this the additive principle for non-mutually exclusive events. Notice there's a difference from the additive principle for mutually exclusive events. Uh, is there? Well, actually, no, there's no difference. It's just that for mutually exclusive events, P of A and B, the probability that A and B occur is zero, and therefore, oh hey, minus P, A, and B doesn't matter. So we just abbreviated in the formula, and for some reason, many texts decide to call it additive principle for mutually exclusive events. They could have just called it additive principle, and it would be the same thing. Well, that's it for this section. Next section, we just get to talk about, hey, uh, does this experiment affect the next experiment? At least in theory, because in reality, if some machine is particularly consistent about flipping coins, then, yeah, the outcome of the last coin flip, if you just load it directly into the machine, you will end up affecting the next coin flip. But in theory, it doesn't, and, well, a lot of statistics or data management is in theory, because there's lies, there's damn lies, and then there's statistics. So, see you next section.